One of the top defenses in the NBA is anchored by a rookie, and the Cleveland Cavaliers have this top defense not only because of the three seven-footers, but from this unconventional zone they use, anchored by those three bigs. What makes us different is just that luxury of, of you know, those three bigs and then being able to cover for each other. When you are able to switch three seven-footers. The base set of the zone is one, two, two. Typically, it's a guard up top, but the Cavs put Evan Mobley up top two guards on the wings and the other two bigs on the bottom. With Mobley up top, that's where this zone is unique. We will first cover the roles of each spot in the zone. First, the two bottom bigs. They are basically responsible for the entire baseline, contesting shots at the rim and closing out the shooters. And as the back line of the zone, they can see everything and serve as communicators for everyone who can't see actions behind them. Then there's the two top guards, who essentially cover the wing areas. But in certain situations, they have the hardest assignments in the zone, and we will get into that later. Then there's the catalyst of the zone, Evan Mobley, whose role is determined by where the ball is and the spacing of the offense. There are basic principles to the zone that allow it to work properly. First is always trying to funnel shots so that one of the bigs can test it. And they do this in many different ways. Whenever the ball is on the wing or corner, they will down it and force drive and funnel to the big while Mobley plays the middle gap. This shell takes away many options. If this big is blown by, the opposite bottom big is there to contest. If they try to snake it back middle, Mobley has clogged the middle. And when Mobley runs shooters off the three, there's always a big to cover. And how do we know Mobley has middle gap? When pass goes the wing, he drops. But when Hayward fakes the pass back to Lamelo and keeps the ball, he opens back up the drop, signaling that it's his responsibility. And when Mobley drops like this, the zone morphs into a 2-1-2. But say Mobley is guarding the ball, it still becomes 2-1-2. This confuses the offense because by designing it like this, any drive or paint touch will be met by one of the trio of bigs. And it's the versatility of Mobley that makes all of this possible. Able to guard 1 through 5, he is the perfect person to put at the top of the zone. As any ball screen up top, they will switch. And in ISO situations, he has proven multiple times he can force tough shots by himself, even against elite players. Whenever the ball is ISOed up top or in the middle, everyone will match up, and the Cavs are comfortable leaving Mobley one-on-one. -on -one. But it helps having two 7-footers behind him, allowing him to play aggressive defense. The Cavs seem to stick to man defense if he isn't in the game, because having this triangle of bigs with Mobley's ability to switch is what allows this to work. Now it doesn't mean this zone doesn't have weaknesses. The obvious weakness is the middle, but specifically the bottom half of the paint. Because for the most part, the Cavs seem comfortable leaving the free throw area open. Because with their length with the three bigs, if there is a flash middle, the bigs are ready to contest and they will bluff with one of them until Mobley can recover and play one on one. And if they then try to kick it back out, Mobley is long enough to recover. But when the ball is caught in the bottom half of the paint, the immediate threat can make it difficult to guard or if it's kicked out to close out to shooters. Here the Pacers screen both Mobley and the wing and Stevenson gets a wide open lane to the rim. Here Middleton flashes middle and the immediate threat of this short jumper in the lane pulls over the defense and now they give up corner three. Another weakness is multiple paint touches and kickouts. The guards obviously have to have to do their part and they're gonna have to you know, either switch out, they're gonna might end up on somebody bigger than themselves, um, or you know, they're gonna have to be an X-man really at all times. Because the three bigs are so focused on contesting at the rim, when the ball is kicked out, all the pressure to be the X-man to run out to shooters is on the wings, as they have to make split-second decisions to either close out or bluff while one of the bigs try to recover or play the extra pass. Here's an example. As Bridges drives, two bigs collapse. But as he turns the corner, this wing is not only worried about the shooter on the wing, but also has to worry about the possible cutter too. So this is where the scouting report comes into play. If this player shoots poorly from the left wing, this big can just bluff and stay on the corner shooter as the wing soft closes. If this player is a knockdown shooter, they would run him off the line while Mobley is ready to contest at the rim, as they want to give up the mid-range jumper because he shoots a lower percentage in that area compared to the three. The effective field goal percentage is going to be down. You know, we're getting guys into our shot profile where we want them to take shots from. 
The idea is trying to funnel players to spots they aren't comfortable with based on the scouting report. But if they do get to spots they are comfortable with, you have one of the bigs contesting. Here's an example. Scouting report says DeAndre Hunter likes to get to a pull up or a floater when he drives left. So what the Cavs do is force him left, Garland sits on his right shoulder, and Wade leaves the lob threat in Capella, knowing Hunter wants to get to the pull up. So by using his tendencies against him, they nearly force the turnover. Lance Stevenson prefers pull ups going left and driving going right. So knowing this, Kevin Love calls out first quarter to force him right, letting him drive right but Mobley will be there to meet him at the rim. So he settles for a pull up going right, something he doesn't shoot often in games. All this takes a lot of multiple efforts and communication to accomplish. And the Cavs have young, lengthy defenders who are willing to give this kind of effort. And that is exactly why this zone will be deadly in the playoffs.